Good afternoon. Ah. Howdy. <laughs> I can't get in. Yes, this is a this Good is afternoon. our hallmark. Hi, Phyllis. Hi, Phyllis. Hi, Charlie. Hi. He's telling me to put all these things put it down. down. Okay. Well, yeah. You know how Lou shows things all the time. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Let me turn this up. Yeah. Okay. I have to turn this can, can you? Are we okay? Can you see us? Okay. We certainly yes. can see you. Yes, you look great. We can see all the boxes behind your green screen. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to look. <laughs> Oh, you've got the thing. You, you need to aim this back down. Should I? Is it on the top up here that you're seeing? Well, let, let's, like leave that. The, let's leave the boxes. It's great. <laughs> is it? I love the boxes. Now, he, now he's got to have I a complete. I was thinking about having, maybe turning this down just a, just a tad. Is that better? Is that better? You can, yeah, the boxes look wonderful. You can see. The boxes look great. It's all right. Leave the just, just move back a little bit, guys. Move back. Move back, okay, yeah. Like this? Yeah, like this. See, we can't see ourselves. We yeah, need your we help. See it, yeah. Just a little bit How's more, that? sister, a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Oh, come in closer. Come in closer yeah. to Lou. Come on over here. There's a puppy. Uh, we have a little puppy dog. Our, right our dog's right behind us. Yeah. Oh, there goes the green screen. That's perfect. <laughs> How's about, that? What about the boxes? You're not gonna Are you going to cut them out? I'm cutting the boxes oh, out. Right. <laughs> oh, Hi guys, it's so wonderful to meet you in person, see you in person. Mm -hmm. We love you so much and we're so grateful and thankful. It's fantastic. Come back, come back and stay here. Oh, you want us to stay we'll here? Be in on it. Something might happen. <laughs> we're just Where's here Amy with Mark gone? and Amy. We've come to see them. you got to go to the toilet. Right. <laughs> That's an appropriate time. <laughs> Phyllis, you look well. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. You all look great. I can't believe this is actually happening. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just in a stun right now. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, we, we wanted to, uh, well, to thank you oh, for everything. That's our pleasure. Yeah. Wish thank, we could do more. Mm. The encouragement, too, and, you know. Uh, you, oh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I had it all, what I was yeah. going to say, and it's just all bubbled up. Yeah, yeah. You, you, as, you I, need some as I said before, Phyllis, we're going to have paying ads so you can think about your questions and your answers in between. We're going to have people who want to pay ads in the middle of it. <laughs> we don't mind the pause. You know the pause? I'm sorry? We don't mind the pause. Pause. Oh, the pauses, yeah, okay. So, what do you want to say, darling? Oh, we'll wait. <laughs> Go ahead. I love you all. Yeah. 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 We love you too. Oh. That's beautiful. Victoria, you're, so, you're such a sweet person, Victoria. I just can't um, believe I'm actually getting to talk to you. Yeah. Hello, Phyllis. It's lovely to talk to you and to get to know you. I've been very... Excited that we're having this this meeting today. Tonight. Well, you know, the hallmark of the Nazarene is to have love for one another. That's our hallmark. Yes. If it was, if we had nothing else but that, that would be the most important thing. And he wants us to have. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Are we ready? <laughs> was planned. <laughs> no. no, this wasn't planned? No. The little No, it's just stuff we have all around us all the time. Well, uh, Victoria, what I want to know is what is it like to ha have Chris for a husband? I bet he's a fun guy. He is so much fun. Gets wakes up in the morning, you know, just laughing. One of those people that you you know, you have to get used to because he's just happy all the time, wants to joke. And, yeah, it's great for me because I'm the opposite. <laughs> we just woke up, uh, you know, an hour or so ago. So, you know, in fact, I was the first one up, which is very unusual. Ah. She's the first I one know. Up. Well, it was 6.19 this morning, and he's, 
you know, patting me on my, my foot saying, baby, it's, it's time to get up. And I went, usually I wake up before he does without any help. But this morning I was sleeping so good. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've been walking all around the caravan show all day with Mark and Amy. <laughs> What's the caravan show? Well, they show all the different types of um, mobile homes and trailers and camper, car vans. camper vans, all that sort of thing. Look what the cat's doing. <laughs> <laughs> You've oh. got a cat there getting up on the chair. And we've been all day with the kids, tra you know, trampsing around this place. We got there at, what, 10 o'clock? Yeah. And we left at 5 yeah. All day. We think Mark and Amy could board a caravan. <laughs> That's awesome. Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. It, that, that, is, that sounds so cool. They put a deposit on it. D excuse me? They put a deposit down. They've already picked one out and put a deposit. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, uh, my uh, dream is similar to Mark's. And of course, it may never happen. But uh, to live on a on a little houseboat, so I can move up and down water areas. Oh, you know, that's wonderful! It might happen, Lou. Yeah. yeah. You never know; it might happen. Yeah, you wouldn't have to worry about floods. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're in a dreadful pickle at the moment, aren't you? It's so difficult. It can happen, uh, or it could be over just by one way or another. You know, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, it's the sad, the saddest thing really is that it's you know it's uh, the interest that you pay on these loans because see that's like all the it's like uh, swimming upstream. You know, you're not really making a lot of headway. You know, but but it's all for you. Who he owns everything, and I don't regret anything. I don't really want to own anything. In fact, uh, I I talk to young people all the time, and I say the best thing for you to do is to not plan on owning anything, and just uh, live and be happy instead of trying to acquire something that you own. You know, of course, I I know that you who had sent me to do something on this on this earth some kind of work and uh, and we i thought we needed a facility and we do we have to have that building yeah yeah where would we where be? would we be without that building we have a place to meet we have a place to, to for the the processing of the operation you have to have a roof over your head and in a fixed place instead of one that's wandering around a lot <laughs> having the same address is so critical for people to find you down down the line because new people are waking up and becoming aware of who they are and the work that you who has given them. So we have to be in a fixed place for them to find us. Yeah. You know. You, you know the the thing that's frustrating is we have more people come from other states to visit our seminars and and buy books from the store. And just come and, and meet and talk than we do here in our own city. Yeah. But it reminds me of what Yahusha said that a prophet has no, what's the word? Uh, no value. value in his own city. Right. So, um, I'm trying to wind up. Might help. Is that better? Can you see us better? Yeah. yeah we can see you great anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, he's, for some reason, the, the program has our image, you know, where you can see yourself, how you look, is so small. Yeah. All I can do is just barely tell that there's yeah. two people. It's in like there. we're a half inch high. <laughs> and we, we don't know how to make it bigger, but that's okay. Well, tell me is, what are you fine? Tell me what to I'll, do to make it bigger. Looks great, yeah. But they don't, they don't want to look at this little thing. They want to see it bigger. Well, if they Can make, they do that? If they make that bigger, then they won't be able to see you. Oh. And they need to see you. Oh, did you hear that? Yeah. What? If you make yeah. it bigger, you won't be able to see us at all. 
Oh, okay. Right. Okay. That's what Mark said. Well. Well, tell us more. Tell us more about what's happening there uh, with, uh, you know, the, the, the people that are awakening and uh, some of the feedback. Well. We, well, wait a minute. Before you start, tell us what city you live in and what's happening in your city. What city do you live in? We live in Cairns, which is the far north Queensland. We're Queensland. Now, yeah. Okay. We're now down in Sydney with Mark and Amy. Right. They're both sitting here with us. So it's a... Oh, it's there. Hi, Amy. Hi. <laughs> I've only heard Mark's voice. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's all right. You've got to say hi. <laughs> yes. And, um, yeah, we're about an hour and a half drive from the coast. So it's out west, but it's up at 2,000 feet above sea level. Mm. And it's just the most beautiful place. Tropical. You know, it's in the tropics, but it's still cold. So we're oh, still wow. wearing track suits now. We're starting to wear track suits and jumpers and things now because it's very cold in the morning and in the evening. The days are always lovely. Mm. You know, they're mm. always about 24 degrees. But it's just superb. They've got the most beautiful trees. Have you ever heard of a Point Siana? Uh, yeah, a Poinsetia. Yeah, a Poinsetia. No, Point Siana. No. You know the poinsettia? It's red like that, but it's a huge tree. Didn't Dell send you some stuff? Photos of them? Yes, yes, I, I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard from her? Oh, it's been uh, a couple of months. Oh, you know, I pray for her every day and, and her husband. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, several times a day, actually. Oh, Have wonderful. you heard from her? No, no, she she just lives two streets away from us. Wow. It's very sad, mm. you know. Well, we're so busy. Yeah. The pressure, the pressure is so intense. Yeah, yeah. We love her, but, you know, she's she wants to do things her way. She's a um, very strong-willed person, you know. Really? Yeah. She, oh, she'll have an argument with you. That's a gift. That's a gift. Uh, it's, it helps us uh, strengthen ourselves. Oh, it you has. <laughs> it has. I, I, go ahead. Go on, that's it. Well, I was just thinking this morning, uh, Yahushua was putting some thoughts in my head about the way people get upset about the way people do things. and Yeah. You know, and they're, oh, you're not keeping the festival properly or at the right time. And, you know, when when all these things were being laid down and the strict order of things was being conducted by Israel, yeah. you know, all through the centuries, the prescribed way of doing things was to make sure that the shadows they were casting would point right to what they were pointing at, you know, the object. And that way, the fulfillment of what they were shadowing was very important to be make sure the shadow was crystal clear so and now we're on the other side of some of those things and people are ranting at one another about what what are you doing well the shadow that was being cast we're still remembering and these are these are not so critical that we be i mean i, I would like it to be but we're not all in step necessarily exactly we're kind of stumbling around and uh, like, you know, we can't really see clearly, but the main thing that was done was the shadow that was cast before it happened. When the event happened, the fulfillment of the prophecies, it, and it's all about Messiah anyway, not us. Nothing we're doing is going to matter. But when they, when the priesthood would, would set down the order for the prescribed festivals, everything so critically important that everything was, because everything had a little piece of the puzzle within it. And still, we have to learn what those are yes. more and more. Yes. But uh, that's that's what I see. And he kept, it was almost like he was speaking to me. I couldn't hear any words, but yeah. this idea had never, ever come into my head. Yeah. And this is really, I think, important. 
you know. Yes, it is. Mm. And yeah. You're finding them out. Yeah. You're digging deep for them, aren't you? I'm not really. It's just that uh, it's coming to you, and you're going yeah. through it. Mm. Yeah. And I wanted to share that because oh, it's it, wonderful, it, Lou. I hadn't even had time to tell her. It was like the first thing that kept happening to me this morning. When and it's like you know, just over an hour I've been away. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all hear it together. Yeah. You know, it's wonderful. Oh, it's just a wonderful vein to follow. The gold, the shadow vein, follow the gold, golden vein. Yeah. But it's meant to be like that. It's meant to be hidden, and you've got to find it through discipline, I think, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so exciting to see you both. Isn't it? It is. All of us. Yeah. All of us, yeah. We got a little sidetracked. You were going to tell us what was happening in, in your city. Yeah. Oh, that's were, right. be, or, I don't know. Were you going to tell us what was happening in your city or what was happening in Sydney? Either way, give us some news. Well, we're, we're um, probably, what, 7,000 in Atherton? 12. We live in a town. Population is about 12,000 now yeah. in the surrounding areas. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we, we've met people that have uh, what they call Mount Uncle's Distillery. And you've met on the screen uh, Kim and Bruce. You remember from our um, Passover. Passover feast? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you had a chat with, with them. They're, they're under great pressure. They're running a huge establishment. It's a banana farm. And uh, they've got two sons. One runs the restaurant and the distillery, and the other one does all the bananas with the father. So the mother's with one and the father's with the other. Mm. And they've all come in and been immersed, but we went through a, a teaching on, uh, what was his name? Todd. Todd F. Tom Bennett on the, on the Messiah, that book, The Messiah. Mm -hmm. We just went through that to give them a basic understanding and they'd ask questions and we'd chat in between. Mm -hmm. And um, one son kept coming to the meeting and the other son just had a baby and they were a bit upset because we talked about end times mm -hmm. and they didn't like the end times because they just had a baby. So they they haven't when they haven't come to those meetings and the father said let's finish the book and we'll just do the scripture by ourselves husband and wife and they go to the restaurant every um, third day yeah every third day evening and they just read the scripture there and they're hoping for the boys to come but I thought I might say to him not to do that. It might feel like pressure on them. Just let Yahushua work. I haven't done that to him yet. There's another lady that rang up. Um, what was her name? Margaret. Margaret. She lives about Ravens Home. About 40 minutes away. About 40 minutes away. And she, we went up to her farm and uh, just a small farm, and she's got a, um, creek. a creek, and she's got a, what's the house made of stone, a little stone cottage, and we walked down to the creek with her, and Victoria went down, down beside the water and I read out to her what to say as she immersed herself. That was lovely. And uh, we're just waiting. Victoria's run into her a few times, and her husband's not connected yet, but uh, that's that, yeah, that's going, that's moving. Mm -hmm. And um, who else? Matthew and Lisa are sort of in and out. That's our son and his wife. They're living with us. They've just Matthew's opened a, a fitness supplement shop. He's into what? bodybuilding. You mm -hmm. saw Matthew on screen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, and Lisa's just about to open a dress shop in Atherton. So they'll have a business each 
They want to achieve and get ahead, you know. Mm. Um, do you want to add something else? Mm. They've just been married one year and they got immersed before they got married and they've um, had a big pull <laughs> back into the Maybe world. They're right. just um, finding it really hard. But Lisa, his wife, is very... Um, very in tune with, with Yahusha and she didn't want to open the shop on on the Sabbath so she made that decision and mm -hmm. since then they, they've had a bit of a blessing come into their life. But my son's very angry still and um, just the aggression is still there and that's a bit hard but we, we're having to handle that. <laughs> well it, that'll come with maturity. You know, we, we experience, you know, um, fervent emotions in, in our older son, but, you know, he is mellowing out and, and you know, it, it gets better as they get older. How old is Matthew? 24. 24. Yeah. That, no, Adam's 20. That's Adam's age, but our older son, he's 30, 31. I don't know. It, Years are spinning, you know, they start mellowing out a little bit more when they approach 30. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's normal. Yeah. We started to mellow out a bit then, didn't we? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you run out of energy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah, yeah, what else is happening? Who else is um, been There's been a, about 20, weren't there? Yeah, we've counted about 20 people in the last six years since we've moved up there that wow. um, have been immersed and gone on. And some of them have moved away. And um, there's a couple up at Cooktown, which is further up the coast, another three hours. And they've got a passion fruit plantation and a farm, and they're going gold mining. And they're really old hippies, and they live in this tin shed. And oh, <laughs> Well, uh, they're the ones that found the newspaper ad for um, uh, that we put in on, on the bottom of their chook pen or something, or the rubbish bin. Yeah. I was going to ask you if you were still doing those newspaper ads, that, that campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah we did, haven't done one for about two months, but, yeah, we're keeping yeah. them up. And we find every time we do one person or... Yeah, there's, there's one or two people have a response and it's amazing. Oh, that's wonderful. We have a little bookshop in our salon and last week we sold um, two fossilised customs, that clients that Chris talked to and they were very keen to, to take the, the book and get, get into reading it. They were really interested. So fossilised is moving. It's really getting people into you know, finding out, you know, all sorts of amazing things. Uh, it's I don't think I agree with everything in the book. I, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm actually learning things and I'm finding errors in my book that I don't agree with anymore. But, you know, they're not, uh, you know, so critically uh, important necessarily. But, you know, if I like in the book, I say if, if half of the things that are in this book are true, we're in deep trouble. Yeah. So, uh, but I am, uh, I'm working towards getting it better and better every time. But, you know, uh, there was a, a person who came in the store the other day, a couple of days ago uh, or so, and said, uh, he's just been finishing up on the book and it took him six months to get through the book. Wow. And he's really learning, he's growing. And he's mm -hmm. gonna try to come to one of the sessions that we have here, you know. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. We have a lot of new people that come to every one of them. Somebody new, you know, shows up. Isn't that great? Yeah. So is Mark and Amy, uh, if, if they go on the road and they're traveling, that's a really great idea to spread the seed. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they can have uh, little meetings out in the uh, park or, you know, one of the little... Uh, in the, so, out, the so, outback. Yeah. The outback with the Aboriginals. That would be cool. <laughs> they can do all that wong 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 dance and everything. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have some fresh backgrounds, brother. Yeah. You keep the green screen and we'll have live. We'll have that didgeridoo. Wow, 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 wow. 
That'd be fun. You know, that's a fun thing. We used to sell those didgeridoos in our shop. I bet you did. I, had, I lost a that my shop. Store. That shop. What? That <laughs> shop. What shop? Is that this? trouble causing shop. Do you have a shop? Oh wow! I just got an email from somebody from England uh, that was saying, "What about that shop? Yeah. How do you justify opening that shop?" And uh, I'm going, "Oh no! Here we go again. It, the echo chamber is just never going to end." You know. But it's it's been a, a training for you, Lou and Phyllis. Yeah. It's been oh, a training okay. for you. <laughs> we we have um a little two rules that we run our salon by. The first thing on the on the we've got it on the fridge and we've had it printed up and the first thing says about life's lessons. How they keep going around. Remember that? Yeah. We've yeah. shown stacks of people. People have wanted copies of that. And we run the salon by two two rules. Don't take anything personal and let them have it. When a client comes in and they want to be blah, 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 you know, what are you going to say? You're going to say, knock, knock, are you there? How can you get in? So we just let them have it. Saves a lot of problems. Yeah. Yeah. Let them have their opinion and uh, give them a wide berth and say, yeah, just keep on going. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people with really bizarre ideas in this world. And Tell I me. see a lot of them too because I meet the public face to face. Uh, but I've, I, I had this, I, I don't have to worry about his name because I don't know his name, but he comes in. He's a he's a witch or a sorcerer or whatever you want to call it, you know. But he's very interested in picking up every single DVD of our seminars to watch. Wow. So he's actually being fed the truth, and over time, he's going to see the difference between the truth and the lie, and he's going to have to make a decision at one point, you know. Yeah. But uh, that's the neat thing about the truth. It doesn't need any defending because it rings true, yeah. even if, because people believe all kinds of fantastic fantasies. Yeah. But the fantasies are just things that they can think of. But the truth is a foundation. Yeah. And this fellow is exposing himself. He was just in the in that shop yesterday. <laughs> that's why he came to mind. But uh, you know, he's very kind. But uh, yeah. I think he's going to grow. You know what Victor just whispered, whispered to me, Phyllis? Oh, tell me. What Lou said, she said, exposing himself? <laughs> to the truth. <laughs> In the <Naughty>. shop. <laughs> Isn't she naughty, Phyllis? Some of that Australian humour. Yeah. <laughs> We had to adjust to it a little, you know. But. Is it all right? Awesome. Yeah. Is it all right? Oh, oh yes. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. Oh, I love good. it. Oh, great. <laughs> well, because you, you can be free. We're a little bit freer over here, aren't we, I think? That, that's what I've heard. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're, not, we're not so... Um, what's the word I'm looking for, Phyllis? <laughs> We're not so, uh, yeah? Restrained? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. You know how Phyllis gets you to say words? <laughs> I just did it to her. She's <laughs> 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 oh, been studying you, know, Phyllis. I was, I was thinking about, um, and I had to wait a long time to say this, so I hope I can get it out. A a on the internet, sometimes you'll see some uh, a news flash of somebody saying something really strange and they say it in a strange way and then later on they'll auto tune it and you'll see them doing it over and over again i don't know if you're familiar with what i'm talking about but i'd love to see an auto tune of you saying that blah 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 i, I don't even know how you did it but it was great you were talking about people come in and they they go they're also blah 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 yeah. I, i'd love to see you do that again <laughs> Funny thing, but when you when they do this stuff on auto tune it's usually 
coming from a really explosive emotional statement that someone made, and mm. then it and it really emphasizes what they just said, and she just did it really well. <laughs> and I'll audit through her. Okay, well, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. No, 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 Chris has it perfectly. Oh, well, we keep talking about it in the shop. They come out the back room, the kids, and they might be a bit upset about the clients, how, how they've treated them, because it's really, a, you know, sword-stabbing, knife-stabbing thing when you come out to a woman and her hair's wet. <laughs> you know? She's sitting yeah. there with hair wet with hair. hair. You may not have met her before. You have to have some sort of, you know, communication with them to, you know, get through that state that she's in, wet hair. They don't like yeah. sitting there with wet hair looking at you, do they? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been on the receiving end of that. I've been the woman with the wet hair. Yeah. It is awkward. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll see that some of them get um, nasty. <laughs> Why? Because they're in that state. Mm -hmm. So you've got you, you're figuring all this out. You, as you're growing in your hairdressing, you've got to realise it. You know, I, I've worked out a whole dialogue. I come up and say to them, "Have you got anything in mind?" And mostly they about 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 they don't. I usually have anything in mind, I've, and I say to myself, under my breath, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, see, on the other end, let me tell you the other end. I'm sitting there wanting them to do something wonderful with my hair, and they ask me, what, 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 what do you want to have done? I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, you're the expert. You tell me. And, I just, and, the, and sometimes I'll say that. I say, well, what do you think we should do? You know, I'm, well, I'm just here. Great. Do something wonderful. I would. I would. I'd what do I something do, wonderful on you. I, hey, I cut my own hair now. Yeah. Look, looks I, like oh. it. Looks like it. <laughs> what? Most, un, most lot, unprofessional. Chris. Most unprofessional. <laughs> That does a lot for my confidence now. No, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving now. <laughs> no, you can't do that. It's been in a while. What did yeah. you say, Lou? I, I say it's longer than it's been in a while, and I like it. You like yeah. it? Yeah. She going to put it up in a chenong for you? Uh, no. No, I don't think you so. Like it flowing. And she turns it around this area, you know, just to keep it out of her eyes. What about the two holes she's cutting aside? The and then it just goes <laughs> at the back. Oh, but it looks good from the side. What do we call that here? Shut up, Chris. What do we call it here? <laughs> Cut the head. Oh, a, mullet. No, no. a mullet. They call that a mullet. You gotta buy a motorbike, oh. sister. A mullet. Yeah, well that's okay. That's see that looks good to us. Yeah, I like it. We we can see that. <laughs> see, I did it on both sides. Ooh. I just can't I just cut it to keep it out of my head. Out my eyes, I mean. Yeah, out of your head. <laughs> out of my head. Well, it's very hard to do it yourself. I'm going to go see a hairdresser today. Yeah. Well, well, you, you've done it now, Chris. I'll come, I'll come over and give you a beautiful cut. Come on. Yeah, we'll have to soon. Come on. We'll have to <laughs> soon. <laughs> and, and, but don't ask me what do, I, what do I want you to do with it. No, but I just say that to get the conversation going. Do you have anything in mind? And so I say about this a bit here and this a bit there and that a bit. I just say to myself, I thought so. And I'll say, yes, yes, that's wonderful. So we just go and give them a lovely haircut because all the cuts we do today 
uh, done like a pattern. You know, when you, you're young and you're at school and you have all those puzzles that have got letters, all up, numbers all over them, and you join the numbers up and it forms an animal or something. Mm -hmm. You remember that at school? Well, hairdressing's a bit like that today. We get the best hairdressers in the world. We get videos of them and DVDs and we bring them into our salon. They cost a lot of money to, to buy. We bring them into our salon and we watch them and learn what they're, how they're doing the cuts. And it's just like a point to point to point. You see, if you stand there and you look in the mirror, everybody, when they sit down, where they sit down like that, their head slightly twists to the side, right? When they sit down, yeah. it should be like that. But they slightly go down and twist back. But if you look at your face straight on in the mirror and you hold your head straight, you'll see your left eye is higher than your right. Your nose is crooked, your mouth's crooked, and your whole head's tilted that way and twisted back. This hairline's for, move, for, move more forward than that one. So when we do a haircut, we do what's called a focal balance. We bring the hair around. We, we cut it so that it's more even and it looks more balanced. But everybody in the world, no matter what country they come from, their neck goes up to a left-hand side, their head's put on their neck like that, and it's twisted. Oh Every single person, no matter what country they're from, are like that. So when, when you, they sit down like that and you do the haircut and it looks straight there, when they stand up, it's longer on this side than that. Right. So you have to hold the head straight to get a nice balance. And if it's cut right, it'll grow evenly. It's wonderful, really simple stuff. But you can get point cuts now. They've all got names mm. or numbers, and you just teach your staff. We have young kids in their first year. They're cutting and colouring already, and they're doing mm. advanced hairdressing, and they don't realise it. We've just said, you can do it. Go on. Mm. So there's, the tech teachers are amazed because they're so advanced. And it gives the kids a chance. Well, it's an art, you know. Oh, yeah. Do you cut hair, Victoria? Beautifully. Yeah. Yeah, but I like colouring better. I do more colouring, and Chris is mainly a cutter. I can tell that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just naughty, Phyllis. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> naughty. <laughs> uh, I had a lady in the other day and she, she, I was late to get to the appointment and I said to her, I'm really sorry I'm late. And she said, so am I. And I said, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> and I just went out in the back room and she told the staff she wants the person that's going to cut her hair, the person who's going to cut it, she wants them to wash it. And the juniors are all shaking. And I said, that's ridiculous. Get her over here. Come over here, I said. Take a seat there, darling. Will you shampoo her, please? And I went out the back and waited until she was done. <laughs> then we came out and it was on. <laughs> and she said, do you dry cut? And I said, that's ridiculous. We don't do dry cuts. You can't get the proper shape on dry <laughs> hair. Seen it. it was wonderful. Because, excuse the word, I tell the guys I love the bitches. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the nasty ones, they're my favourite. I have a wonderful time with them. I bet they have a blast with you too. Oh, <laughs> they do. She went out and she said, I love it. I love it. She's the one that bought the fossil eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I sold her fossilized. I sold her a fossilized as well. Oh! She bought products and the fossilized. She got. Well, she, didn't re she really didn't know what she's getting into. Oh, she does didn't know, darling. If they ask me, I tell them. <laughs> she got told. 
<laughs> but it, it's fun. She loved it. She's happy as a pig in mud. <laughs> there was a customer that uh, called in and they wanted a copy of uh, a book. They were trying to remember the title of it. And they said it's something like Fossilized Footprints. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we we hear all kinds of things. They, they, um, yesterday, I was talking to a customer that they called to order uh, the fossilized book or the fossil book. That's what it was. She said, "I I wanted to order that fossil book." Fossilized customers. Yeah, we we hear uh, they, they can't think of the name. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, it's just it's wonderful, Lou. It's so wonderful. You've no idea what it was like stuck in Pastor Max's church, being an assistant pastor. I pray for Max. Eh? I pray for Max every day. I know. Yeah. That's wonderful. I, I mean, I love him, you know. Mark, I don't send, know. Mark sends him all your stuff. Yeah. But we never hear anything. <laughs> Last time we came down to Sydney, we just arrived at his house about 6 o'clock in the evening or 7 and we just knocked on his front door and came barging in and hugs and kisses and everything. He didn't know where he was. He couldn't believe it, you know. So that was yeah. great. That was great. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I, he was just wonderful at the beginning mm -hmm. when he came over from Indonesia. He was so gentle and wonderful with us. Yeah. We're married because of him. Because he, he stood by us and showed us and helped us, you know. It was a really, really, really crazy situation mm -hmm. that he got himself involved in, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, then he, he, he started to get in contact with a church in Denpasar and the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to be up there with them. And so he lost it. Mm -hmm. And he's pretty bitter now, I think, underneath but we're praying for him and hoping that he's, yeah. you know, something will happen, that he'll come back to himself and see. Mm -hmm. But just to, I mean, once we, we got fossilised customs, um, I showed it to Max. A little Indonesian man gave it to us and I read it. Then I showed it to Max and he said, yeah, I've seen that. And then he said, here, here's, here's a copy of the scripture, you know, not the B-I-B-L-E. And he gave me a true copy of the scripture that he had for a couple of years. Mm. Never shared it with me. I didn't know anything about it. And then I just said to them both, everything we're doing is wrong. So many things we're doing is wrong. Look at this, look at that, look at this. And they just went berserk, you know. Mm. So uh, he told me I had to sit down the front of the circus in the front row to be an example for everybody, you know. Then I started moving back after I got fossilised customs, I moved back into the middle. Then we moved up to the last row the next week. And then halfway through that week, I said I'm to Victor, I'm going home. You can get a lift with Dell or somebody else, but I'm out of here. Mm. You know. <clears throat> so then we all came out and I told everybody that was with us, you know, I, what I believed now after fossilised, it just opened the door. I mean, life just came into us because we were just dead and so it was like a, a, a dirge, living a living dirge, you know what I mean? It was just mm -hmm. like going to your death, a funeral every week. It was just hopeless and there was no end. There was no life, no love, you know. Mm -hmm. It got so horrible. And so we all shared it and they agreed and they wanted to, come out too and the next next thing we heard from Pastor Max, Chris and Demon of Chris and Victoria have got demons in them. That's what he <laughs> told, told his circus. So we thought, okay, I I prefer these demons to those ones. It's the dog oh. behind you knocking it over. No, she's right here. She's not, the, she's she's not she's walking out of this. Yeah. 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 She's, Duchess. Duchess thinks she has to be between Lou and any possible danger. So wherever he is, she lays to be the first, yeah. you know, to catch the danger. 
She can see she can see Lou's hands going up and down and his feet. He's going yeah. like while he's sitting there, he's going like this, and she's aware of it. Yeah. What's happening? I don't know. <coughs> Just you doing something bizarre, and she's responding to it. Oh. No, I was doing that, but. Uh, now she's know. over there whining. Well, it's a, it's an amazing thing, though. The you know, the experience is when you go back and look at where you were, oh. and we're in the last year or two, how far Yahusha has brought us. Oh. And his love, and being it being every day, I ask him to to sit in first position, and not uh, let me have any say about what I'm doing with my right hand and my left hand. Just let him do all the directing and all the thinking, because when you do that, then uh, sin is like not a, really a possibility. I was uh, coaching a, a fellow. That's why I consider myself to be a, a kind of a coach. There was this gentleman that came in to that shop, and he, and I gave him a little thing to do, and you know, to earn some money. And I uh, don't have very much money to to spare for things, but he asked me if he would, if I would be available to teach him Hebrew. And uh, I said, well, you know, even more important than the Hebrew is, you know, that that you learn to meet Yahusha and to bring him into your life. And he has a lot of bad habits. He smokes cigarettes and uh, has other problems. But I said, the next time you uh, reach for a cigarette, ask yourself whether or not... Feel us. <laughs> you're doing it. <laughs> ask yourself whether or not Yahusha is operating your hand to reach for that cigarette or if you're doing that. And that really opened up some ideas in his head, because this is a very in incredibly intelligent person. And I said, you know, you're just out of, you're in control of yourself, and you shouldn't be. Yeah. You know, the, the self-control should come from Yahusha. Yeah. And uh, it's just little things, you know. And I'm not condemning anybody about whatever their personal problem is. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that's just something that will help people, you know. It's a wonderful way to go about it, Lou. It's, a wonderful it's the only way. way, really, that it makes sense to any of us to, because when we're in charge of our own minds and bodies, it's it's always always going to go wrong. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's very clever the way you put it back on him. Yeah, it's and I put it on him. I mean, his responsibility, his choice, because every choice we make, moment to moment to moment, is is either our choice or it's Yahushua's choice. Yeah. So you're doing the rules. You're letting him have it, and you're not taking anything personal. That's right. See? It's yeah. coming as a snake and gentle as a dove. Yeah. Wonderful way to go, isn't it? No judgment. Uh, when I first awaken to a few things, as most people do, what happens is you feel like you've got to tell everybody everything you know. Yeah. It just overwhelms them, and they're not even... You know. yeah. <laughs> bit by bit, isn't it? Bit by bit, yes. by bit. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and you can't yeah. make you can't make someone think or understand what you know. Mm. You've just got to lead them if you can. Yeah. In, into yeah. it. Oh, it's so exciting at all this stuff that's going on. How are you holding up, Phyllis, with all the abuse? We're worried about you. Oh, I'm getting better. I mean, I think I think it's like a training ground for me. I, I, and my son came up and said, "You're handling it better because every time I get a, used to be when I get one of those phone calls about that shop, I used to get so emotional, and 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 it's. But sometimes I can feel the demonic attack coming oh, through the yeah, phone. Yeah. You know, and and um, sometimes I handle it well. But, you know, sometimes I just fall apart. And I had to call Adam because Liz gone to work. And I call Adam and say, Adam, come up here. I need help. <laughs> you know, and he'll just call me down and talk me through You know, it. when we look back at the history of the religion of Christianity, what we see is a picture of someone or a group that got a hold of a lot of power 
that is enforcing the commandments as they understand them, according to their human traditions, and they're enforcing the Torah, the instructions, and they're using it as a weapon. But actually, the Torah is a weapon of love. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it, we're only told to teach the Torah. We're not told to we enforce it. it. Yeah. And that Nicolaitan spirit had millions of people die as a result of all this. You know, the Inquisition and, you know. You, you know, I, w I was sitting here having the thought, I don't know if this has ever been said but out loud, but these people that call, and they're being so judgmental, email call and whatever. If they were aware of how many people are in, in Messianic ministry right now because they've encountered Lou at that shop, you know, they would be surprised. And um, Yahoo's work is going to go on. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it isn't about anything about the shop at all. It's about the message, and the message is being conveyed. And that shop is actually a like a tourist shop. Almost everybody in the city knows that. Very few of the people in the local area actually shop there. It's basically mm -hmm. people that are out of towners, and they're going down a main highway, and they see it, and they, they shop. And then they pick something up and they carry it to some far away place. He, he used to have uh, regular visitors, yearly visitors from Japan. Yeah. They would come every year to visit. You know, I mean, they were coming, but they always made the, the shop as yeah. part of their visit. It's a tiny little place. You know, it's not very large. It's uh, 50 feet by 50 feet. I don't know if that sounds large, but, you know, it's... You know, it's, it's a musical store, you know, very music inclined. And it's amazing how many people that, um, I mean, I relate to a lot of musicians and locally and nationally and, and globally. But, you know, when I think about the musician in my mind that stands out the most, you know who that is? No. I, I, sorry, Mark. Uh, I really respect you. But David or Daoud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, Shaul or Shaul, or whatever, he wanted to have him in his court. He didn't even want him to go home. Mm. He's a wonderful musician. He probably soothed uh, everybody's feelings in that place, you know, with his harp playing and singing, you know. Can you imagine? Would have been lovely. But uh, there's uh, Carrie Alexander and, and Mark and Amy, all these musicians, and, mm. you know. We feel such a bond to all of them. That's wonderful, isn't it? Yes. So what instruments do you play? Trombone? <laughs> he sings. The lips. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> That's about all, darling. <laughs> yeah. I'm not musically inclined. Me either. Right inside, in my field of view right here, I have a guitar <laughs> and I have a keyboard over there. And I was thinking about my trombone this morning for you're some not, reason. You're not bragging, are you? <laughs> you know, I have a flute too. You're not bragging, are you? What? You're not bragging, are you? No, no, no I, I just love music. I, just, I think so too, I, Phyllis. Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> you need to have a brag. And we love you, mate. You have a brag and enjoy it. Well, can, can you play all those, Lou? Only a little bit. I'm a master of none. Yeah. What? Which one do you like the most? That's a tough call. I'm My sorry. first love uh, musically was the keyboard. Yes. And I didn't have the money to buy a, a keyboard when I was really young. I fell in love with it when I was about nine or so. And I didn't have the money, so I took up guitar lessons instead. Mm. All right. So I became a guitar teacher, and I met my wife. As a result of that, oh, right. she, that's wonderful. That's now, Phyllis, I want to get down to the point. Now, when all these harassers come to you, what do you think? Why do you crack? Just go there, sister. We can edit all this out if you don't want it. <laughs> No, you've got to keep it in. The producers people, people want to see all this. People want to see them how they really are. And who's going to ask them straight, poignant questions? Straight, poignant questions. 
<laughs> what do I crack? What do I think? I, first of all, I don't feel love. That's the first thing. And it depends upon Isn't how that they selfish. <laughs> You're thinking about yourself instead of them. Yeah, I think. When well, you got to change right. that, you yeah. got to kick that out of your life. It's really Yahusha that they are fighting against. It's yeah, not it's not really you, mate. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do take. I do take. You're absolutely right. I do take things personally, and that's what Adam yeah. is always. Yeah. You know, Adam comes yeah. upstairs and he says, you can't be emotional. It's not emotional. Right. It's just but you, right can, or you can overcome it. The yeah. love that you're feeling for that person and they're offending you, you've got to overlook that. I have the bitches come into me all the time. Mm -hmm. I overlook it and have a ball with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Am I love you, you know, you know it, it's... It, if the person on the other side is coming to me gently, like serious questions, you can't like, have everything your own the, way. Then I'm okay. I I can explain you it. You can't to have them. everything your own way. You have to go along with what's put. I don't I'm, handle. I'm talking. I'm, I'm talking. <laughs> you have to go along with what's put on your plate, mate. Yeah. And you have to give over and let Yahusha have you. Not take control. That's it. I love you, darling. <laughs> See? I don't handle confrontation very well. Yes, you are. You're handling me. <laughs> you I know you love me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I'm unhappy for what you're doing to yourself because mm. I love you. I don't want to see you hurt. Mm. And you have to be stronger and understand that those people have not got the true spirit in them. I mean, it was so hard for us when, because we love our clients, we just love them. Mm. And it's so hard, we had to actually face that they don't have the true spirit of love in them. And they're so loving and kind and nice, but they don't have the true spirit in them. Mm. And we have to face that. So if someone's going to come at you like that, clink, 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 all your armor should be on there. And shoo, shoo, you're fly, <laughs> flying away the arrows. And you get your sword out, which is out of here, and you just say nice things. <laughs> you win. You need to win this battle. Yeah. You've got to fight, Phyllis. You're a soldier. You're chosen. You have to understand who you are. And he's giving you this. You should be saying thank you. He's giving you this. So you can win because he's got more for you to do. You're not going to cry, are you? No, I just never saw it that way before. Thank you. You know, Chris, one of the things that we all have to realize is even the, especially the people that are trying to accuse yeah. and judge and use the Torah as a weapon. Yeah. Is Yahusha is right there in the presence of the person. And if you put his, if you can project a, an image of Yahusha before you, and he's standing there silently, and you're looking at his hands, you know, yeah. what, what, who can say anything knowing that? Yeah. That's right. And I'm thinking, if I'm, if I'm stressed or if I'm attacked, Look at him, you know? Yeah. You don't take it personal, do you, Lou? No. I give it to him because he's the one that's really being attacked. Yeah. Yeah. If we lash out at anyone else, we're to get him. We're hurting him. That's right. I mean, I'm just yeah. I'm just dishing out information that I got out of your bloody book. <laughs> and I'm getting all the crap on me and it's your fault. Oh, no. So I understand... <laughs> I understand yeah. what you're saying and where it's coming from. Yeah. See? So, Phyllis, you don't have to worry about it, darling. Just say, oh, thank you. Thank you. That was kind. Thank you so much. Yes. Let them, <laughs> let them have it. And yeah. you can be like me, Phyllis. You can love the bitches. <laughs> I mean, we watched, I, I've written to you and told you about Hillsong. 
And we yeah. watched we watched that come into Sydney from New Zealand and just take over and lie to everybody and put a false foundation there. And they said that you have to be under a covering, like an umbrella. You all have to be joined together. And all these independent little circuses were just smashed and split up, lovely people, and they're all taken into this whorehouse. Mm. And they became whores. And I mean, really. And they treated everybody like, you know, how, how a whore would be if you woke her up in the morning <laughs> on Sunday morning. Oh, sorry, the first day morning. How would she be after a night on the town? How would she speak to you? And that's what they're like. That's how they treat <laughs> people. Now, you've got a lot of people coming that failed in those organisations and they're now coming into the messianic movement with the same mindset. Yes. They want to set themselves up as the new messianic circus. And that's, yeah. that's yeah. what you guys uh, don't have to contend with because you've already got your background, you've already got your reputation, and Yahushua is using that. So how would Yahushua feel standing there with his hands out to you and you're doing this? Yeah. Taking it personal. How would he feel, Phyllis? He'd want to put his arms around you and say, come on, darling, you don't have to worry about that. So I, yeah. hope, I hope we're reaching you, darling, because we love you. Yeah, if they try to wound us, though, we have to remember he's already wounded. He's going to bear those scars for the rest of eternity, and we're going to see them. Yeah. You know, th this is so odd because you don't know how many times I've given that same type of message to other people that have called me. They're hurt, they're yeah. wounded, this, you know, yeah. and, and they're broken spirit. And I tell them the same thing, what you just told me. Yeah. Okay. But I, I've never had anybody tell it to me like that. Same spirit. Yeah. Same spirit. Same yeah. message for all of us. Yeah. We all have yeah. to do this. But we have the power inside to overcome evil, mm -hmm. don't we? We're all born with that evil seed in us mm. and it, we're not allowed to let it grow into a tree by telling lies, are we? Because we'll grow up with bad fruit, rotten fruit. Yeah. So what we have to do is get washed in the blood and that cleanses everything. The bad seed goes. Yeah. And then we're left with our habits and the habits are the things that he's changing. They're routines that we're in and we don't want to give it up. He's going to pull us out of the routines and go into his mindset. So we're just telling you something that you already know. Yeah. A lot of people want to... Uh assure themselves that they're delivered or saved and uh, they're most, mostly concerned about going into the lake of fire themselves and and uh, you know once Yahushua takes you up and in, into his arms and and you understand the power of the, the, the serious deliverance you're overwhelmed you're swept off your feet and you know that he's got you and not you holding on to him it's nothing you have to do. You just surrender. And then you're more concerned about other people. And all these thousands and millions and even billions of people that are not going to make it. I know, and, Lou. I know. How does your heart feel about them? That's the thing. Oh, isn't it dreadful? Just, and how do you reach them? Well, I think we're all being trained and he's preparing us for a moment in time when he's going to release us in power with him running and directing everything in our hearts and we're going to s send the message into the world but we're learning it right now we're just in training yeah yeah you know? well you're getting a good body of work underneath you oh it's all it's already done by people before us like prophets yeah his mind is has been running through this revelation all through time but at, at, at certain points, certain people are going to be used to bring forth things. And we're all learning together. Yes. 
know? Yeah. It's an awakening. It's a quickening just before the end. And uh, the end is not a bad thing. That's, uh, oh. you know, you shouldn't worry about the end. It's a beginning. Yes. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. You know? Now, In, well, I want to ask you something. Yes. Are those bits of dust flying around going to get us when we go from planet to planet? <laughs> after everything's over and done with? Because I want to go on a fishing holiday with you <laughs> on a different planet. Oh, well, I'd like to do that too. Well, you, should, you should be able to, but you won't be married. Be able to get away? You'll be able to get away, you won't be married. <laughs> you know, that's true. Uh, you know what, Col you know what Colin about, said? You know, what, I, I think the excuse for the dog is whining. Yes, I. We she's she's in desperate need. I'll be right back. I let, yeah. have to let her out. Yeah, we have to let this puppy out. Come on, Dex. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't know what the next world is going to when we are changed, it, it, what it's going to be like. But every everything that we can imagine is probably falling far short. Yes, of what reality will be. How incredible! I mean, what about how incredible this? creation is and, yeah. and we're actually going to be with somebody that loves us that had the mind to do this amazing magnificence that we're allowed to observe and then we're just going to it's going to be better than what we could ever imagine mm. you know what colin said no he thought mm. that him and his wife might be fused together to become one being. <laughs> Isn't he wonderful? <sighs> well, it's going to seem like that probably when Yahusha in, fully inhabits us. Yes. Feel the joy is going to be just immeasurable. Yeah. Do, you, do you get times that you're so overwhelmed by everything that you're drunk? Oh, like last night I was... Hallelujah. So <laughs> I was so tired, you know, and I, uh, I had one beer after work to relax and stopped. Uh, I'm sorry if some people think the alcohol is a problem, but I had oh, a beer. No, we're not worrying about what they think. No, we're not. Are we? We're, we're totally just talking to... real. Yeah, and. Uh, did you enjoy your beer, mate? Oh, I did. It was. It, what it's... brand? What brand? Foster's Lager or what? Well, in this particular brand, is I think a micro brew. It's called Magic Hat. Magic People can probably find that on the internet. Hat. It's one of Adam and I's favorite, our favorite beer, Magic Hat. Magic Hat. And uh, this one a was like a very moonshine dark beer. to me. It sounds a bit like moonshine to me. No, it's not moonshine. It's not made from corn. No corn. <laughs> Corn. Yes. Heaven accent, Lou. I know. I, but, you know, you do too. But, uh, yeah. I hope everyone can understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, we can. Easily. Easily? Okay. But you're not real droll. You haven't got that real southern droll, honey. Have you? I don't know that I do. I... My parents were from, Char well, my mom was from Charleston, South Carolina, and they have a very distinctive accent. It's not, it's Southern, but it's not the typical, you know, rural uh, type accent. It's a very Bostonian style. All right, I see. For, for Bostonian. It's, it's, they say really interesting, they, they say the word beer, they say beer. You know, they don't say that word beer like that. They say it like beer. Yeah. Oh, they're, um, they're, not lamb, they're not lamb choppery. I'm not familiar with that term. Yes, you are. Lamb I choppery? Say, I say lamb chop. <laughs> oh. Lamb the, chop. So like Georgia. Yeah, the Georgia accent. I love that. Oh, me too. Lamb choppery. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful. So, Phyllis, 
You won't be married. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? You, you won't, won't be, be married. married. In a new world. Yeah. Did you know that? that? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm aware of that. So I don't think four, about four it. Four inches towards me. Well, he keeps moving me. He yeah. loves you. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's trying to move me out of the picture, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, don't, I don't really think about that so much. Um, because, you know what? Later. I can't imagine Later. not being joined with Luke. I, we may not be married, but somehow I think we're going to be all part of one. Oh, you've been talking to Colin. <laughs> <laughs> what? Talking to Colin. Colin says he's, he thinks him, him and his wife are going to be fused to one being. I, I feel like I'm fused as one with him now, and I just can't imagine not being like that, but we but you know what? I think we're all going to be in one spirit with you, Yusha. Yeah. I think we're all going to be one. And we'll all know who each other is because he'll be shining through each and every one of us. Won't that be great? Yes. Yeah. Aren't we blessed that we can see each other now? Yes. It's amazing. and We can't even imagine what it's going to be like, though. There's no way. It's... Uh, it's beyond comprehension. How many different countries are, are getting on to fossilize, Lou? Wow. I, I just got an order yesterday from Austria. Hmm. Wow. Uh, Lou, Lou doesn't have, a, have as much of a feel for where we ship books to as I do. Yeah. Um, we, we ship to Austria, Australia, Japan, Indonesia. Um, Australia, you know, New Zealand, uh, Africa, Tasmania, England, did I say India, France. Wow. You got contacts there? Not contacts in the sense that we're in touch very much, but I hope one day, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. France and Spain are very Catholic. Yeah. Not so much South America. I don't think we've ever sent anything to Spain. No? I don't think so. I don't remember. Oh. The, uh, it's all right. You're allowed. It's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you think. <laughs> well, if, if I wasn't stuck in this chair, I'd be pacing right she now. She does this I, when, I'd pace. Really? when I'm driving her and she's sitting over there in the passenger seat in the car, she's doing that, you know. Yeah. You can't sit still. You're like Victoria. She gets out the out the back on the ride on Mara and goes all over it all over the garden. Okay, so uh, what side of the car do you drive on? Do you are the me. cars? You, you mean me? Right. Well, or the, I mean, or the driver. The right hand. On the right, the right hand. hand. Yeah. yeah. But she, we, we, it must be strange for you because we drive on the left hand yeah, side. Yeah, that'd be yeah. weird. Yeah. But we've got we've got a lead foot here. No. <laughs> He's accused me of the same thing. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You should but see should see Victor. I'm not anymore. Hey? I, I, I'm not anymore. I, I in fact I trained myself. I became so concerned uh, that I've trained myself. I I now use the um, cruise control. Yeah. So I can't Isn't go it this wonderful. Way. Yeah, I love the cruise control. All you have to do is steer and mm. brake. Yeah. yeah, it's wonderful. Mm. Victor's a lead foot. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> she gets in that car and goes, meow, up the hill. When I get the car. When I get the car. <laughs> you own the car. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fantastic, eh? So do you like to drive fast, Phyllis, or are you just in a hurry? Just in a hurry. Yeah. I I just, I, I, I always, Lou always says I'm like my mother. She never was where she wanted to be. She always had, she was always headed for that next thing. And uh, I guess I'm like that too. I'm, yeah. You know, I try to be in the moment, but sometimes I'm always thinking ahead to where I have to be and what, what I've got to do. 
instead of what I'm doing you right know, now. Some people are in a room and they're in that room and that's where they're at. But sometimes some people are in the room, but they want to be in another room and you can sense it. They're like moving around a lot. And they're, uh, you know, Phyllis is in room after room after room after room after room. Well, actually, sometimes. I, I pace around the house why, sometimes. Why, 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 why? Nervous energy. And yeah. Phyllis says uh, in her travels, mm -hmm. as she's moving around, uh, which she does quite a bit, the, uh, well, that's her exercise plan, maybe. Yeah, you know? there you go. But uh, the dog, she knows where I'm at because the dog is guarding me. You know, all she has to do is say, well, there's the dog, so Lou's right there somewhere. Well, you only, you only go from the bedroom to the computer anyway, don't you? <laughs> well, oh, and Amy, the, and Amy, the Amy, Amy did you see that look on Phyllis, Amy? It's the same look as you get. <laughs> <laughs> see, Amy? It's where I spend most of my time. I'm either in front of the computer or I'm in the bed. Yeah. Arthur, I barely can or, get him or, to the table to eat. It's come on, yeah. Lou. The food's on the table. It's getting cold. And so if I'm in the house now, I'm, I have to spend a lot of time, you know, at the store. At yeah, the shop. but it's so exciting, Lou, isn't it? It's so exciting. You can't not look and see what's happening. I know. Yeah, there's amazing things happen, and uh, he brings things to us. That we never expected. Yeah. Well, things that we know that we should, in the normal pattern of most people's lives, would never have come to us unless he brought it. Yeah. You know, we have we're not responsible for what we have. He, everything we we have has been given, and most of the it, everything that's really valuable is is not in physical form though. It's it's in the uh, understandings that he's put in our heads that we have and we see so clearly. You know what his love really is. Yeah. You know, it's about he loves us so much. Yeah. yeah. It's really something to contemplate, isn't it? Yes. If you sit there and just contemplate on it. Yeah. So I'm just fascinated with this lady that um, <laughs> goes <laughs> paces from room to room, and if she's sitting still, has to do this. I mean, it's not. <laughs> It's not slow, Lou. It's like this. I can't even keep up with her. Yeah. <laughs> it's taken years of practice. I bet. And, and you have to just rip them around so that they I just understand. barely brush the skin. I understand. But. Look at her go. Wacky do. Wacky do. I mean, I understand living with Lou. What, are you, what else are you going to do? I mean, you're just, oh, please. It's so hard, but wonderful. Of course. Yeah. Well, the journey is very exciting. We're so happy to have found you, yes. to have found Yahusha, yeah. to come out. It's just so wonderful. We just want to pour all our love towards you yeah. and just pray for you and tell you not to worry. Yeah. Stand up, yeah. Phyllis. Stand up. Yeah. Remember all this, won't you? Because you'll probably get a phone call tomorrow. <laughs> you, you you know what? You It probably will be today. And because quite often Lou will give me a word in the morning before he, he go, well, we had our coffee and he'll give me a word. Yeah. Uh, some scriptures, some something. And I know when he does this that, that later that day I'll have a phone call. And I'll need that word that he gave me. And there I am giving it to them word for word, just the way he gave it to me. Well, you uh, yeah. And he prepares us. And I, um, you know, like like the, the day, the last time I had a meeting with Amy, and he always overwhelms me. I said, look, I'm going to need some scripture, some guidance, because I want to talk about this. And, and so he he. He did this whole page on PowerPoint for me for on a computer. And I said, oh, that's too much. I'll never remember that. I'm not going to use it. I said, I'm not going to use she all used that. all of it. And I <laughs> ended up using it for the perfect game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are, you, are you a bit afraid to get on screen, darling? 
you think? I don't know. I'm just asking you. It doesn't look like it. Yes. You know what I like to get to, Phyllis? I like to get to the bottom of things. So I ask you straight out in love and you have to tell me the truth. <laughs> you know I do. Why, why are you choosing to be afraid? I oh, no, 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 no. Listen first, listen. Listen to the question. Why are you choosing to be afraid? It's easy yeah. to hide. It's easier to hide than, than be Why bold. do you want to hide? Look at all you've got. Look at the knowledge. Look at the relationship you've got. What do you want to hide for? <laughs> They're just people. People are scary. <laughs> oh, we have to get to the bottom of this scary bit. <laughs> if they haven't got Yahusha's spirit... They're just nuts. Now, you know, all, the years, yeah, all the years that you've spent as a, as a hairdressing professional has turned you into a psychiatrist. Yeah? You know? I don't want to be one of them. But you're better. You know, you're more, or you see more people and more interactions with real people yeah. than a psychiatrist ever will. They've yeah. been studying the wrong things anyway, but... You've been studying the people themselves. Yes, I'm. Subject. But, yeah, that is true, though. You know, but our persecution is not to the point where any blood is being shed in this particular place and time. And I mean that because some people in some places right now are being persecuted to, to the point of death. Yeah. But, uh, very in this place and this time, our persecution is not about shedding blood. It's a spiritual attack. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's common from people who brought what you were saying out of their Christianity and they're now in the Messianic community or the Nazarim and they're imposing the same mindsets that they had yes. that was previously being used. And that's the real serious problem. They have got the love of Yahusha and putting him in place and remembering how great a deliverance they themselves have been delivered from. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then they're accusing other people of being imperfect. That's what happened with the example of the parable where the Pharisee stood up in the temple and was thanking Yahuwah for not making him like that, that sinner over there, you know? Yes, I remember that. Yes. <laughs> that was the unworthiness of all of us is apparent, you know. But uh, as we're toiling and working in the, in the vineyard, who is planting seed through us. Yes. And it's doing it. We're not planting seed. He's planting the seed. And then somebody uh, next to us that's working planting seed is off task and not planting seed. And whip one of us that is, you know, beating on the beating on the beat one another, you know. And it, but you know, the wise managers see the objective. Yeah. The objective is more important than anything else. And that's, you know, that people out here get the truth. And, you know, and we have to go after the unlovely. Yes. Yeah. Phyllis? Excuse me? Did you hear that, what Lou just said? Yes, you, sir. You have to chase the unlovely. Yes. You have to go after them. Phyllis? Yeah, turn things around on them. Yeah. When Yahushua was attacked, he would ask a question. And it was a very pointed question about the, the, the person that's asking the question. Really. Yes, so clever. You know? That's what we have to learn. But, so clever. Yeah, he was so... He is. He's still in us. So he's at, able to turn the tables and say, well, what about this? And then, well, let me ask you a question. Yeah. And the answer to the, their question is embedded in the question you're able to give. That's right. That's what I did to Phyllis earlier. Remember how Phyllis always says, what's the word I'm looking for? And I said, what's the word I'm looking for, Phyllis? Yes. <laughs> what do you reckon, Phyllis? Well, I'm thinking about how everybody's given different gifts. And Lou has always had the gift of speaking to people. We would, from the 
from the first time I ever met him, we'd go out to restaurants, you know, after we got married, and he would be sitting there playing with the stuff on the table, and he would do it just as the server would come up. Back then, they were called waitresses, but now they're called servers. Uh, they would come up, and he'd be talking to them, using something on the table, and he'd talk to the sir, and I'd just be sitting there like, I want to be someplace else, any place besides with him. You know, that's a fun thing. I, I, you know, in the video that they have been using against me on the Internet. See, you wouldn't let me talk. I play with things. <laughs> I'm always playing with things around me. And, I thought that was uh, wonderful. Oh. How can anybody accuse you of doing something hideous? <laughs> You know what I mean? There you well, were. There you were. This poor woman on the phone. She's pouring her heart out, and you're just totally mocking her. Wasn't it wonderful? Did you well, Did you enjoy it? I enjoyed watching it. I felt pain for her because I wanted to help her, but at the same time, she she was saying things that I wanted to stop and say, "Whoa!" Oh, I uh, know. Believe what I'm hearing. I hear the most amazing things. Lou, you know, Lou, saying. what was she saying to you? Now you got to tell me the truth. What was she saying to me? Yeah, because this is all those people have said all these things about it, but they don't know the truth. So I'm asking you for the truth. What was she saying? I believe she was saying that she had exposed herself to some illegal drug, and she wanted my advice about whether or not it would show up in a test. You know, and I said, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, and basically, that yeah, you're going to have a problem because you can't do that stuff, you know? But uh, they, they want to keep doing it, I guess. And anyway, they, they keep going back to it. And when we sell somebody a product that removes the toxins from their body, then I usually promote the idea of getting rid of the toxins completely. And that washes them clean. And then to not go back, you know, like you've sinned. I do not judge you. Go and sin no more. <laughs> you know, that's basically the message every one of them hears from me. And they go back and sin again. And I... Uh, I keep asking them, why do you do that? You know, why do you keep doing this? You know, some of them are repeat customers, you know, and apparently this woman was one of those. And I don't know her. I had no idea who she was, but she apparently picked up a product and and then, uh, then she was calling to say that she'd slipped up and she'd made a mistake. And that's how I remember it anyway. So she, the, she was off her face while she was talking to you. She was off her face? Yeah. What does that mean? What does that mean? Stoned. Out, oh. of, out of it. Oh, I don't know that. I, she may have been. I don't know. Well, you said she slipped up. She did, yes. Do you think but she was sober when she was ringing you? I don't know. I couldn't even make a judgment about that. You I don't can't know. say. But, no. you know... But I did know that she was saying things that were really off the wall, and I didn't understand. Uh, that how sounds she could, oh. sort of sounds a bit suspicious, yeah. doesn't it? It to, does to talk and, like but, that. But what I was doing, though, I was picking up these masks yes. and playing with them and pretending that she was talking to them. Yeah, and I did that a lot. I mean, a lot of the people that call. That shop, uh, they'll ask me what time we close, or uh, ask me if I have a poster or a T-shirt of a particular musical group. And I'm and other customers are standing in front of the counter when the phone rings, and I'm talking to them, and then the phone interrupts us, and I'll put the little beaver on the phone, and they love it. You know, the customers, love it. and I don't, I don't. That's a, that's normal behavior for me. Yeah. You know? You've got, you've got the sense of the ridiculous. Exactly. Okay, now a lot of people a lot of people out there that are listening to this haven't even got a sense of humour. That's, so that's, 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 that's why I'm asking you to tell me yeah. the truth. So yeah. 
They've all judged you, but they didn't know the truth. And now the truth has come. But I don't yeah. think I don't think you're lying to me. It's not very it's not very deep at all. It's very shallow. It's very it's very straightforward. It's not nothing scary. You know, if I put a giraffe a little wooden giraffe on the phone and I and I respond to it, I put it on speakerphone most often. So that the customers that are standing around, like a husband and wife were standing there a couple of days or yesterday, you know, and I put uh, one of these little things on the phone and they're listening to the person talking and they're imagining, you know, they're talking to this uh, thing, this prop, and uh, it's just for fun. I'm never going to call him at work again. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I don't let her go on speakerphone. And... <laughs> Because I, I just don't ever do that. Why? You know? Well, I wouldn't put my wife on the, the phone in front of other people because, you know, it, uh, it's a personal thing. I mean, she's my part of my body, you know. Yeah. And I don't, uh, I take her seriously. Well, he, kn he knows I'm not going to call unless it's really something important. Yeah. That, I don't it's just It's usually call. very important. Might be it, uh, financial. It yeah. could be something's happened. Could be something. You need him to do something. It's usually something serious because he doesn't really have time to answer the phone for but frivolous the, things. The real reason why I put people on the speaker phone and when they call is because I'm usually talking to someone, yeah. either mm -hmm. one about one thing or another, and I and it's an interruption, and I want them to have something to to do while I'm doing it, and it's not a problem. I mean. They, it's entertaining for them, and, and it, and it kind of holds their attention so that our conversation kind of is embraced in three ways instead of just two. So, ladies yeah. and gentlemen out there, we just want you to want to release this confusion that's going around. We just want everyone to know that Lou has a sense of the ridiculous <laughs> and a sense of humour. So yeah. it's just harmless. So we're really, we're really sorry if we've offended you with our silly games, but you know I don't think we're going to stop them. <laughs> Probably and, not. And, and at the moment we're selling these. <laughs> what is that? Don't you know? It's just a keyboard. Hang on, where are you? I can't oh. see it. It's just a keyboard. Oh, oh it's a keyboard. <laughs> oh my. It was just a, an advertisement break. And it comes with this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was an advertisement break. Okay. That was to give me a chance to think. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> she was being a girl, Lou. She's going, oh, my dear. <laughs> You know how they fluff up their hair? Boy, I'm glad you love me. Yeah. <laughs> you reckon I, you wouldn't like to be on the bad end of it? No, sir. You think I could tear shreds off you? Yeah. I'll put those shreds. Yeah. What did you say, Shrek? Shreds. No, shreds. Oh, I'm being silly. Shrek. Uh -huh. Shrek hairdo. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm going to the hairdresser today. You know, Willie. Oh. Well, you should. Excuse me? You should. I liked your hair when it was short. But Just if, if you're going to grow it long, you need to grow it evenly down here instead of cutting it off there. You need to grow it evenly. If you wanted layered down the sides, that would look very pretty so that you could either turn it out or turn it in. Or you can actually have it coming over and out and in as well as coming out. And uh, I, I have a philosophy, Chris. Yes. That you probably may not agree with, but I don't have time to worry about my hair. My hair has always been natural curly. Yeah. And always, I just mm -hmm. wash it, shake mm -hmm. it, run my fingers through it, it dries. And the way it dries is how it looks. Well, that's great. I don't take the time to worry about my hair. 
And so if I can't get a haircut where I can just wash it and, and tell dry it and forget it, then I don't have time for it. So am I supposed to be impressed? <laughs> 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 that's lovely Phyllis that's really good it's, if you don't have to do anything to it you've got lovely curls I've got, hair, I've got hair like that too Phyllis mm. I just wash it, it and shake it yeah yeah but I mean I don't I'm, have time to make it do this or make it do this as, as I'm saying <laughs> as I'm saying if it's cut correctly it will just do that naturally turn in or turn out if it's cut correctly, not just. complex <laughs> now. <laughs> Phyllis won't have a complex with me. I, I may never be the same. <laughs> well, won't that be good? <laughs> when we first met, Phyllis was a. Uh what we would call a classic introvert. Uh, she didn't want to be seen by anybody. But then she became a realtor and went to realtor school and learned uh, the law and everything about that. And then she started meeting people and showing them real estate, houses and things. This was, what, 20 years ago, right? And uh, she has changed from that point because Yahusha used that to change her into someone that could communicate on the phone and you know, I, I, I've always been in a kind of a, I've never met a stranger. Uh, I mean, I, everybody to me is like uh, somebody I'm just drawn to. And, the, and if somebody I don't know, I, I, I don't treat them any differently. Yeah. But uh, Phyllis has been a, a changed person. So she can meet new people and she actually perks up when a phone rings and someone that has never talked to her before is on the other side of the phone. She, she, you could hear it in her voice. She goes, oh, she's getting, she gets excited. She's excited. Hang about on, it, so. hang on, hang on. Show me the, yeah. per, show me the perked up, Phyllis. <laughs> show me the perked up, Phyllis. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go find Come her. Over. I'm going to go see if she's in the Here, other room. Here's a telephone. Oh, no. Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> What happened? What, what just happened? <laughs> what happened? What happened? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> but let me go back to spinning my fingers. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Is she quick? No, Look how quick she is. Mark's cracking up over here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he loves all the hairdressing talk. Yeah. Yeah. I do too. Yeah, it's wonderful, eh? Well, listen, I think it's time that we went to bed. What's the time? Quarter to 12. Quarter to 12 we are. Oh, goodness. It's like quarter till 10 yeah. in the no, morning. It's all right yeah, it's for fun. you. <laughs> we, we had to, it's all right for you. Don't say excuse me like that. It's all right for you. We had to try, wait up all night to get to you because oh. you, cause you can't get up any earlier. <laughs> That's what I was told, you know. I thought, oh, it's 10 o'clock. Now it's 12. Wait, that was 6 o'clock this morning for well, you. 6.19, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's early enough. 6.19? What have you been doing all the time? Oh. They had to get up. It was before sunrise. <laughs> I was trying to get him outside and look at our beautiful sunrise. rhododendron bush yeah. and he wouldn't go out there and see the sun. Yeah. But it, well, don't rhododendrons come out in winter? No, they come out in the early, sp well, spring. spring. It's spring up here. Yeah. Don't, don't they come out in winter up no, the mountains? No, spring. They're up the mountains in spring. Yeah. yeah. Well, guys, it's been absolutely wonderful. Yeah. We love yeah. you. Yeah. And we'll we be, love you. Yeah, thank you, mate. We'll get together soon again, eh? Oh, I hope so often. Yeah, yeah. We love it. Maybe we can do it from Cairns and join up in Sydney or something. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. That would be wonderful. Yeah. You're going to miss me, Phyllis? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but we have a lot to talk about now. Yeah. <laughs> with you, definitely.
That's yeah. so great. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much for putting this together. It's a pleasure. And thank you, Amy, for putting up with yeah. it. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I went and had a shower and everything in the middle. Yeah, it was lovely to meet you both. Do you want to say yeah. something to Lou and Phyllis? Victoria, maybe we'll Skype some time and you and I can actually talk. Yeah. That'd be lovely. Now that, now that, because she wanted to meet all of us, you know, together before she met with you personally. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. It was just too scary to think about. Yeah. You gotta stop oh, this. We better quit. Yeah. You Sorry. all go to bed and uh and we really appreciate the time y'all staying up late and everything. Thank That's you. A pleasure. Yeah. I'm only joking. Okay. Don't take me serious. You okay. know you know I'm naughty. Oh. <laughs> I know you love me. Uh, we do. Well he has to. It's an order. <laughs> That's true. Click the command. How do you click it off? <laughs> How do you click it off, Mark? <laughs> How do you make it stop? <laughs> what just happened? Bye. 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 Bye.